ladies and gentlemen, and all genders outside and in between, welcome back to Thirsty Work, the all new sex education podcast. Tonight, I'm joined by Roxy Royale, and we're going to be discussing the tantalizing subject of burlesque. Hmm, it's thirsty work. Hello, the spectacular specimens of humankind. It is Val and Vane back with Thirsty Work, and I'm joined by the exquisite Roxy Royale here. How's it going, Roxy? How are you doing? Good, I'm well, thank you. You're doing well, yeah? yeah? How are you? Yeah, I'm doing very, very well. It's uh, It's been a long time since I've seen you, to be fair. It's, it's been, been a while. In fact, it was your last show. February? I think, I think no. it was, yeah. yeah. You yeah. were at that one? No, I wasn't. No, I wasn't at that Halloween. one. Halloween? Halloween. Is that how long it's, it's been? Halloween. Yeah. Oh, good <laughs> lord! This is outrageous. It's half That's a year. that is just, time flies when you're busy as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> we <laughs> do too much. <laughs> like just too many things. I'm just like, oh wow, uh, how have I managed to let time get away with me again? <laughs> um, but oh, that happens all the time. That happens all the time. But you were the actually the person that got me into burlesque all that time ago. Many, many it's, moons ago. It's been a long time. Yeah. We did a, we did a few shows together. We did, but before that, day. so my introduction to burlesque was terrible, <laughs> if I'm completely honest with you. <laughs> it was like years and years when I was in university, I went to a burlesque show and I was, I was all dressed up because the only thing I really knew about burlesque, it was like a, a 50s. pin up Yeah, pin up yeah. thing. So I was like, okay, I'll, I'll wear the suit and okay. go all out. Um, and it was in like a gentleman's club and it was just full of old men in polo shirts oh. and a couple of young ladies taking their kit off at the front and I was like, I'm here in a three piece suit. Um, <laughs> this is this is different. So I I kind of given up on burlesque after that point. And then I met you and, and we did aerial and bits and pieces together and then your life was forever changed. And then my life was forever <laughs> changed. I realised how much I wanted rip-off clothing. And it was, <laughs> it was fantastic. No, it was really, really good. It, it definitely opened my eyes to a whole load of different things I wasn't expecting. But what got you into it, I'll ask? I, I had just finished college um, and I was going to uni to do dance and aerial. And I wanted to kind of experience as much as possible. All right. So I'd been brought up with the classic ballet tap modern and contemporary okay. stage school dance and I thought there's a whole world out there of stuff that I don't know so I did a six week course in burlesque I did a six oh, week course in belly dancing I did a little showgirl course I did everything but I burlesque just stuck because it was like creative and I could just do whatever yeah because it okay let, before we go down all kinds of tangents and stuff <laughs> Do you want to explain oh. what burlesque is for anybody who's listening who doesn't know what it is? Because obviously we've been doing it for years and I'm like, ah, well, it's all these things. But what would what is burlesque? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's, there's quite a few different uh, definitions. Like if you look historically um, to burlesque, I mean to parody. Um, burlesque has often got either a political or a parody element to it. Oh, is that where the origins come from? Is like a parody of stuff? Yeah, to burlesque, like with a K. Um, oh, right. Means to, um, is it Greek? Greek, Latin, one of those two. One of, one of those, <laughs> <laughs> one of the ancient languages. One of the ancient ones. <laughs> um, yeah, it means to parody. Oh, right, okay. Um, and it was, I suppose at the time, like it will have evolved into what it is today that whole political as you say sometimes it has political elements sometimes it parodies other elements of life yeah exactly that there's um there's a lot of men involved in burlesque in the origins so now it's quite a uh, heavily female dominated mm -hmm. industry uh, used to be mostly men like back in the old 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 days the old 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 days <laughs> when the only people that were allowed on stage were men Mm -hmm. Good old times. <laughs> not at all. Not even no. slightly. <laughs> not even slightly the good old times. Um, that's that's wild. And then you say that it's it's changed over the years. Yeah, it's changed massively. There was um, in more recent history, like nineteen hundreds, there was a a definite difference between American burlesque and British burlesque. Oh really? Um, yeah. It was. It came together um, with the British blondes, like uh -huh. kind of the American and British stuff came together to make more of what we know today um, 
and more scandalous. Seeing people's stockings. Oh, good lord. Filth, absolute filth. And there were rules in the olden days about nudity. Uh -huh. um, so a woman could be naked on stage if she didn't move because it was art. Okay. And then one day. Okay, interesting. Um, someone's dress accidentally fell off. Oh, and there shucks. we have, <laughs> there we have some stripping. Oh yeah, because there was definitely that period of time. I, I can't speak for other countries, but in the UK where it was like to see a to see a lady's ankle was scandalous. Oh. <laughs> not it's too not much. the ankle. Oh good lord. Not the ankle. Good. Oh. <laughs> mm, it's it's oh, and it's really interesting as well. Like because I've I've talked about this before in regards to like the allure of um specifically uh, like women's legs should we mm -hmm. say like the ankle was scandalous yeah. and then of course the skirts got shorter and then the calf oh my lordy then just above the knee good lord that's outrageous and then it went right up to like mini skirts and yeah. now we've got like people with tiny hot pants or walking around in like bikini bottoms and stuff like that and it's just like okay like the the I, I, are there people still out there that get tantalized by the ankle i think they do oh definitely 100 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. percent. you get all, all strokes for all folks and yeah. stuff but that's that's really interesting the that dynamic of because i think when people think of burlesque in this day and age they definitely think of like the movie burlesque or like moulin rouge yeah can can girl type yeah. thing it's not. It's not. <laughs> it's, it's not. Shaking the head. Oh, God, no, that's not. not. <laughs> it has changed a lot. Yeah, there's definitely elements of those things. There's mm -hmm. a lot of costume inspiration still taken from things like mm -hmm. Moulin Rouge. We've got ruffles, corsets. Yeah, yeah. Feathers, stockings, all that kind of stuff you see on there. Um, but the Balesque movie did a big... Um, there was a big boom yeah. in Balesque after the movie, but it was people expecting the movie and not... Yeah. What we know is burlesque. Because, I mean, that's what that, that I was going to talk about this later, but the, <laughs> the, it skips straight into the media's portrayal of burlesque. Because I know that, I mean, obviously being a sex educator and also running fetish nights and stuff like that, the media's portrayal of kink and um, fetish and stuff, especially with stuff like Fifty Shades of Grey, has skewed the, the truth, shall uh -huh. we say of the uh of, of the lifestyle and the life choices and stuff like that um is it the same for burlesque is that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It's, just... it's the most sort of whitewashed toned down version possible some of that movie is burlesque there's some good stuff in there there's all sorts but it, the kind of glamorous lifestyle that it looks like you have this huge dressing room and in reality you're getting changed in a broom cupboard Half oh the yeah. Time. <laughs> <laughs> oh um, god, yeah. I once got changed in an ice cream van. In an ice um, cream van. I was doing an outdoor event and the only place to get changed was like inside through a thing up the stairs to find the toilets that were out of use. Um, That's uh, quite the palaver. So yeah, I got changed in the ice cream van, which was um was the ice cream person there? Yes. Yeah, he was sitting in the front in the cab <laughs> um, and just like closed the window <laughs> like, while I got dressed. Leave um, you to it. And that's then just right. emerged in my burlesque costume. I love that. I lo Do you know what? Some of the weird things that we get into, like as, as performers, the amount of times it is, it's like a broom closet or a, a like oh yeah some toilet somewhere and you're just like desperately trying to keep your costume out with the piss puddles on the floor yes. and yeah oh god what's the sketchiest place you've you've performed you don't have to mention any names but, but you can tell <laughs> us about the the sketchiest place you've performed um sketchiest place i i performed in a pub function room to 12 people and a baby like a newborn <laughs> baby okay that was um it was interesting. We could hear them heckling us because there were, you know, yeah, fourteen yeah. people in the room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it definitely changes things slightly. Yeah, that was a that was a fundraiser event. I did. Um, it was a fundraiser with twelve people yeah, and a baby. Yeah, didn't wow. raise much That's... money. No, no, I can I can imagine. I can imagine. Well, I mean, I suppose whatever it was fundraising for, every penny counts. Yes. But you would think there'd probably be a bit more of a uh, an attendance element to it. For you, sure. You would hope. You would hope. With entertainment. There was comedy, there was burlesque, there was... The crowd was not ready for burlesque. No. I think that happens a lot. Burlesque gets put into a lineup. Yeah. 
And the audience are not primed for what to no, expect. No, because burlesque is a very different audience interaction yes. than the vast majority of, of stage performance. Because I remember very clearly going to a burlesque show, uh, an event, um, and the burlesque, it was a burlesque element of a much bigger event mm -hmm. without mentioning any names. And I remember the burlesque performer coming on and taking off an item of clothes, took off a glove, I yeah. seem to remember. Um, and I whooped and I cheered and I was like, yes, woo, well done, yes, fantastic. Wah. And people looked at me like I was the pervert and yeah. I was doing something wrong. And I was like, that's what you meant to do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that's, is... yeah, that's the host's job to, <laughs> to, to, to inform everyone. Yeah. And... There's nothing weirder than taking off your clothes to silence. Yeah, it just, it, it goes from <laughs> we're having a, a happy-go-lucky time to this is really seedy now. Yeah. 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 It sounds weird. Yeah, it's... It's, it's an obscure one. Yeah. It's, it's not <laughs> I nice. realise that anybody listening to the podcast now cannot see your face, but the, <laughs> the look of <laughs> sheer dismay <laughs> that's on your way just, oh, God, this is the, like the having haunted look. <laughs> The absolute haunted look, just being like, oh God, oh, those times, oh, this is the worst. And it's happened a lot. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Usually when it's not a burlesque show, it's burlesque as part of a bigger thing. Yeah. Because, and this is the other thing as well, like, mm. I suppose it's, especially as a host, there's a difference between hosting, like, a variety show and hosting a variety show with burlesque elements or, or a burlesque show. Yeah, they're three completely different yeah. things. And if your host does not know what they're doing, no. then the burlesque is not going to be received well. Because you imagine your average couple that have gone mm -hmm. out to watch some nice singers or Magic Mike or something, and then the woman usually yeah. comes on and starts getting the kit off, and that's not what everyone wants to see, unfortunately. Especially if they're not expecting it. Yeah. Because surprise boobs. Su surprise boobs. As Not much, everyone's cup of tea. So, as much as we are very much in favour of the surprise boobs. Yes, we are. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's definitely, because I've definitely seen it in some of the shows that, that I've done where I've hosted and like you'll get the burlesque going on and it's all fun and games and they take the things and everyone's like, yeah, burlesque. And then they're like, ah, I feel uncomfortable because I'm here with my partner. And you've, you've just got yeah. like judgmental looks going around. Everyone's like looking around being like, okay, where are your eyes looking? Where, where are your <laughs> eyes looking? Yeah. Which in a burlesque event, it's like a celebration exactly. of, of the teas. Yeah. And looking at someone on stage is not cheating on the partner that you are sitting with. No, not by any no. stretch of imagination. Some people feel kind of. I suppose are you that, looking at that. Yeah, that that comes into that. The the there's a whole conversation of is somebody watching pornography cheating? Mm. Is somebody going out with their friends and their friends get strippers cheating and and stuff yeah. like that? Which is realistically speaking a, a dynamic between that person and their partner do you know yeah. what i mean that's that's uh, not gonna tar everyone with the same brush all our comfort levels and trust levels and communication but that's a another conversation for another time but so in regards to that though i think a lot of people def definitely initially when they're first introduced to burlesque think of burlesque as stripping and they're very different they're both art forms but yeah. they're very very different yeah it is getting your kit off. There is yeah. stripping happening, but the difference to actual sex work that happens in strip clubs mm. is wild. There's um, there's quite a bit of debate about whether burlesque is stripping. There was a horrible point in time where burlesque became classed in the media as classy stripping. Oh, oh okay. And it, it created That's... this huge divide between hashtag not a stripper, which yeah. became a whole thing and burlesque kind of i don't want to be associated with that stuff that gross stripper sex work that's Ugh. so bad on so many levels yeah. as well because it, it it does it condemns sex work for so much more than it needs to be condemned like it doesn't need to be condemned at all sex yeah. work is real work for the clarity of everyone that's listening <laughs> um but it is that whole thing of being like, okay, we're going to try and pile everything in together so that it feels disgusting to the public. And then there's it creates that divide yeah. between burlesque dancers and the 
sex working so, or the yeah I suppose that that then is the question is is burlesque sex work because it's the the art of the tease isn't it yeah. that's that's what it is I think sex work adjacent if that's yeah. a category yeah, yeah. um because that's you've still got the the stripping the entertainment the sales without the stigma without the lack of safety mm-hmm. without all the shit that sex workers have to go through just to do their job and there are to be clear just for anybody listening there are uh, many many places out there that, that are like strip joints and and um where the sex workers are fine and they're grand and they're mm-hmm. very very good but we it is well known that there is a lot of especially across the world in these places safety is not always a, a priority yeah uh, whereas within certainly within the burlesque shows that, that i have been witness to and the burlesque shows that i know get put on yeah. the safety is always a priority top yeah. top notch yeah, absolutely and it's just not it's it's the it's the co- cool factor in air quotes of okay. like being like a stripper but none of the hard stuff if that none makes of the sense the hard stuff as in as in none not of... getting down to actual genitalia and yeah i mean a lot of people draw their line there i found the hardest part about club stripping was not getting completely naked it was making sales to men all night mm. and getting sales constant sales which is a completely different job yeah no it's definitely a, a different dynamic and it's a different skill set as well like yeah. having friends who are both um in the burlesque side of things and the sex work side of things they're, they're two different skill sets yeah they're two completely different Hugely. skill sets um and but at the same time it, i think it also needs to be said that they're both art forms yeah like there is an art form to to stripping in, in a strip club yeah that i think is massively undervalued yeah because these people regardless of gender are toned and dance and perform and they know how to move their bodies and they know how to to incite certain reactions from people or after yeah. those things so that's not that we're here to talk about that side of things, no. <laughs> but, but I think it's I think it's an important dynamic that it is worth considering or worth mentioning at least that it's exactly what you were saying a second ago about that dynamic of not con- not using burlesque to condemn the sex work. Yeah, exactly. You know? Which is great. Which is which because we're we're all in this together and we should be supporting each other yeah. and all that jazz. You know, it's great. It's fantastic. But then, so like in regards to burlesque, though, I am aware that there are different. Just as you were talking about different um, dance forms before, because obviously it's changed over the yeah. years and and those dynamics. Uh, but then there are also different levels of people uh, of of like people's. Oh my God, words. Um, <laughs> people's personal boundaries into what they're prepared to go into. Because having hosted shows, there's plenty of people that are like, how far am I allowed to go? Can I get completely naked? Yeah. Um, and stuff like that. But then there's the question. Does that then become stripping because they're doing, because they're getting completely naked? Oh. It depends on what kind of license your venue's got. <laughs> Whether you're allowed to get completely naked. I love that. <laughs> I love that. It's a weird line. I've definitely got more comfortable with it over the years when I first started burlesque um I danced with with a group of people that had taken classes at the same Mm -hmm. place and half of us didn't even take our bras off it was not topless yeah we didn't do pasties until you were ready for it and there was was no pressure and it was really good because I was not quite 18 (laughs) when I started burlesque so there was not that anyone knew <laughs> okay um, there was no pressure i never felt any pressure to do this or that there's no formula you don't have to do pasties to make it burlesque no no um and then after probably after i'd gone to uni and just the whole process of uni being more liberating than living with your parents yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i got very comfortable with it very quickly <laughs> which is great which is fantastic because there's so many and different then, forms of it as well because d- you do quite classic yeah to well would you would you describe what you do as as the classic how would you describe your own your own act that's a really good question that i've been trying to pin down the answer to (laughs) for years trying to um figure what figure out what is my niche um classic stuff with with some extra filth 
love that. Love that. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm like. I'm all for a little extra <laughs> filth. Always a little extra filth. Um, I've dipped my toe into the comedy side. Um, I've done a little drag king work. Um, I love them. I just feel like it's something I want to explore more, but it's not necessarily within my skill set at the minute. It's going to take a lot more work. Because that, that's, that's something that's... hard. Yeah, because burlesque is perceived i think a lot of people especially if they don't know much about burlesque burlesque is perceived to be like a specific thing like we talked about the moulin rouge yeah. the, the dita movie. von tees dita von tees yeah exactly yeah. um i think dita von tees especially in the 90s was like people's introduction to burlesque she was mine yeah that's how mm. i found about it this woman that was married to marilyn manson yeah in my teenage self was obsessed with yeah I was like who is this woman i want to do that who are you? Why are you in a champagne glass? Yes, I have so I want many questions. <laughs> I want my own champagne glass just for my house. Um, yeah, I love that. I love that. But I suppose that's the introduction. But it's what I found wild, especially going into more cabaret and and stuff, was how many genres within burlesque oh, there yeah. are. So many. Because it's yeah, it's wild. It, yeah, it's. It's hard to find something that's not burlesque. Like you can do so many performance styles, art performances, and they they can all be burlesque mm -hmm. if you want them to be. Yeah, the the creativity is quite literally like endless. Yeah. I have seen the absolute filthiest of the filthy through the most like crying, laughing comedy. Yeah. Um, like right through to some really quite heartfelt moments of of like really like people that really play on your emotion you're like oh my god what what i'm so sad <laughs> i'm so yeah. sad and this person's taking their clothes off and i'm but i'm i'm very confused <laughs> what is this yeah i think it's really beautiful that you can have such amazing storytelling yeah with the burlesque is that something that you would say is particularly key to burlesque is is having a story to tell i think it's key to making your act interesting Okay, all right. Um, something that makes you stand out, having a reason to be on stage mm -hmm. that's not kind of a, a cookie cutter burlesque. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, to, something to differentiate you from the next person who yeah. might have the same colour costume. How are we telling the two apart? Oh, well, she told her story about heartbreak, but this very similar looking one actually made me feel something else mm -hmm. and differentiating in that way and it's not always lust no not contrary always. to po many people's popular belief <laughs> because there is there is that element there is that obviously the art of the tease the mm -hmm. art of taking I, I remember somebody telling me years ago about um a, a performer and you know what this might well be complete hearsay. I've got no <laughs> idea. But they were telling me about a performer in like the 50s or 60s who did burlesque. Um, and she'd do a show every Friday night. Mm -hmm. um, and she every single show, would she'd take one item of clothing off. Yeah. So she'd start with like, she'd make an entire routine about taking off one glove. Yes. And people would go back week after week because they wanted to see the next bit that she took off yes. and the next bit. And, and I love that. I love the fact that you can... You can really, and it's not like milking it for all it's worth. It's I am bringing you into this because it, it's that anticipation of yes. what's gonna be there. And, yeah, oh, I love it. I love yeah. it. Yeah, like we we all know what's gonna. Well, we assume what's gonna be underneath the glove yeah. when you take it off. It's gonna be a bare arm. More than probably. Likely. More than likely. <laughs> but it's how they make you want to see that. Yes. No, I think it's fascinating. Which is, I mean, that's that's a massive thing about perception and what we consider within our with our minds about like a hand tantalizing to some, not tantalizing to others. That's perfectly fine. But the way that one person can lure you in yeah. to that that dynamic of just yes. being like, yeah, you want to see this hand. Yeah, it might not be. And how? Thing, but it's just a hand. It's just. But it's you've just made hand. it something yeah you made something of it it's that building the anticipation yeah. it's it was the nfts of the 1950s <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. absolutely no substance but yeah, everyone wants one <laughs> yeah. yeah it's like capturing your audience is a yeah 
It was an important part. Oh, 100%. 100%. And so, because obviously you run burlesque shows as, yes. and, and burlesque classes yes. as well, along with Ariel and a million other things. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, we do too much, you do too much. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, do, like, what at what point did you think about teaching burlesque over just the performance element? I think I wanted to teach. I just wanted to pass it on because I oh, sounding really corny <laughs> but less completely changed my outlook of what was possible I didn't know it was a thing I didn't know you could do this put your own acts together and mm. go perform them and get booked and travel and tell stories and even down to like meeting new friends having the best time backstage mm -hmm. all that stuff I just wanted to share that. I just wanted to share I just it. Wanted to share that. <laughs> um, and just to be something a little different that was, um, one of my classes are tailored towards creating burlesque performers with acts to sell. Oh, and right. To okay. Perform yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's really good because that's, I mean, that's a big thing in the industry, yeah. isn't it? It's just like, when do you start charging? Yeah. Because everyone uh, i mean the performance industry is ruthless and everyone will always like i've always found it baffling because my my first thought is right i want to pay everybody that ever works for me yes but that isn't everybody's first thought no it's not no it's not <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah there's yeah we teach so much more than just how to peel a glove we do business classes we do social media classes oh, we do how to get booked how to apply for a show how to not piss off a producer I love how the to, fact that that's a thing. <laughs> how to cut the tags out of your goddamn costumes. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a thing? Pet peeve of Pet mine. Peeve. I chase people with scissors. Just because they've still the tags. got tags in their costumes. <laughs> yes. I suppose it's like like having the, the sticker still on the bottom of your shoe. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we just got some new shoes for the thingy. Don't, don't dance in brand new shoes, friends. Don't. No, never. Like, wear, wear, wear them in first. You will regret it. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. So you say that like burlesque, like completely changed your outlook on life. Was it as as in like the dance performance or just your outlook in general? I think both. Okay. It was I didn't know what that was possible for my dance career mm -hmm. to go that way. I always there was no plan B. I wanted to dance. I wanted to teach dance. I wanted to perform dance, and I have, and that's what I do now full time, which is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> um. But I didn't know it could take this route. I didn't know this route existed. Oh, Jesus. So it was quite a limited mindset because at 16, 17, when I was looking to the future, applying to colleges, applying to conservatoires, it was very much contemporary dance was the thing mm. and cruise ships. And there's nothing wrong with that. I have so many friends that do both of those things, but it just wasn't my thing. But I didn't know what my thing was. Yeah, I didn't quite fit into. Because it's definitely any box. like in regards to performance as a whole, dance. Because I, I obviously I've done a lot of stuff on um, loads, of, so many different things, but dance is not like the automatic go-to. Like I would, if I was booking a variety show. I wouldn't immediately think to book just a dancer. Yeah. I think, oh, I'll book a burlesque dancer or I'll book a dancer that does uh, acrobatics or something yeah. like that. You would have those elements, but it wouldn't... Like, I think a lot of the time when it comes to dance, it's either professional ballroom, professional ballet, you're part of a troupe that yeah. back in dances thingies, but there's not the greatest amount of opportunities to create for yourself. Exactly. Is the way I'd put it. Yeah. Do you think the burlesque is definitely one of those elements that you can then. Yeah, there is a massive creative freedom to do whatever you want. I love that. Yeah. I love that. It's so the simplest much. way to put it. Play to your strengths and do the things that make you happy. Because if you're happy on stage, your audience can tell. Yeah. And if you're... Um, sometimes it's easy to fall into a trap, and I definitely did previously, creating an act that you think other people want to see Ooh, that's interesting because you think it'll get booked more but you can tell yeah 
when someone's doing something they really, really enjoy. Yeah. And that's what you want to see. Even if it's not the best act in the show, the best act in the city. But if someone's really, truly mm. enjoying what they are doing, that makes a world of difference. Yeah, I completely concur. I think that's that goes for all art forms, but definitely with burlesque. Yeah. Because there's a uh, certainly an element of you can tell when somebody's like nervous yeah um you can tell when somebody's bored <coughs> sorry you cough away <laughs> <laughs> you can tell when somebody's nervous and you can tell when somebody's bored yes. like i've definitely seen performers who have obviously done the same routine 200 Thousand, 300 yeah. 400 times that month Yep. <laughs> and they're just like okay here we go again that's yeah. that's the thing and it's all just clockwork at that point um but is there is there a part especially being a teacher is there a part of it where you get to see that that flare in a student's eyes when they're just like this is this that's is my the, favorite that's thing your to favorite see. thing i love yeah. it i love that and it takes some exploration yeah quite a lot of exploration because um, there's no one size fits all there's no because no. i i remember having conversations when I was talking about my burlesque and stuff and it was just like yeah I only ever prep 60% of a routine yeah because the other 40% is going to be audience interaction and I can absolutely guarantee it just because that's yeah. the way I perform yeah and then you've got other people that are like nope I, I need to choreograph yeah. to the count yeah, yeah. <laughs> everything is choreographed yeah. to absolute perfection and it's like that's fantastic that's the way you perform yeah but um yeah there's there is no like one size fits all no that's not and someone finding that that spark of joy mm. that they love and it feels like everything just clicks into place and then that's when you can start making a connection with your audience yeah which just makes it so much better to watch and to do yeah and what okay there i mean you've, you've literally just said the connection to the audience there audience participation oh the scandal mm -hmm. it's it's uh I have seen an awful lot of things where people have, because I know a lot of um, performers who do involve people in the audience, yeah. they go and sit on someone's knee, they go and do the little things, but things are changing. You can't just, or you shouldn't just do that. Yeah. There's a consent process there. Oh, look at that. That <laughs> lovely consent <laughs> word. We love that word. Because it's it's really important, especially when you're doing something that is so, for lack of a better term, erotically charged. Yeah. That then there does need to be consent elements to yeah. it. Yeah, and you can't tell someone's boundaries just from jumping off stage. No. And um, it often performers will have a plant. Yeah. Their partner or their friend's partner or someone they know in the audience who they can go and play with and yeah, stroke yeah, their yeah. hair and sit on their lap who's also not going to try and sue them afterwards or for doing things. the other side of things <laughs> feel them up yes because that's that's the other side of it yeah that goes both ways <laughs> the, the consent of the performer to the audience but then the consent of the audience being you you sit on the wrong person who's a little bit too drunk and they get a bit too leery yes that's always yeah. fun that's always fun so um yeah with audience participation some some shows have um in the beginning they'll give their the rules and things, no photography and mm -hmm. clap and cheer and make noise. Um, and they'll have like a little consent thing. So if the host might say, if you see a performer come off stage and come towards you and you don't want to interact, do you um, cross your arms in front of your chest to make an yeah. X to say you don't want it or just look away and make it really obvious. I've the, My favorite one was, um, I won't say who the performer is just in case the thing, but they, they said uh, if, if an audience member doesn't want to to be involved or what have you tell them to tell them to do a shush <laughs> a little a little shh. Like and that, that way that way it's kind of like a it's subtle it doesn't bring draw attention yeah. to the person being like oh well that person don't want to be involved yeah because i have seen some like especially in magic acts when it's just like oh come and do this thing and they're yes. just like i don't want to be involved and it's like come on you can get involved <laughs> i don't want to be involved that's not something that i want but that's yeah that's like a, a big thing and I suppose that's that's the really important thing is having that. Okay, what what is going to be the consent? 
levels what are we yeah. going to do as a, our signals and that's the responsibility of the host really yes or and the discussions with the performers being like okay who's got who's got audience participation <laughs> here <laughs> yeah find out what the protocol is for yeah that performer or that show yeah and there needs to be a valid option to say no yeah and it helps to know what you're saying yes to in advance that's good yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's all well and good saying yes i will come up on stage and sit on a chair while yeah. you dance around me but then what happens is this person gonna have their top taken off them yeah something that's happened a lot like i consented to sitting on the stage i didn't consent to being stripped being stripped yeah i think that kind of conversation needs to happen in advance yeah because i've definitely met performers who obviously take all, all of that into account and now i've definitely met performers who are just like well this is the way i do the show so like it or lump it and i'm like no no <laughs> absolutely not <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not weird it might have been the way that you did things at one point but that's not the way we do things like mm. or certainly not in the shows that i'm a part of so you know um but that's that's really interesting but like i suppose straight on from that there is also the element of the as we mentioned audiences getting a little too comfortable shall we say oh yes and because like especially with some of these shows your dressing room isn't necessarily on the stage no and you might have to walk through the audience yes to get back to the look of re absolute <laughs> resignation <laughs> look of resignation on your face just, oh god yep. yes okay we, we're gonna talk about that we know this too well um yeah as the night goes on the drunker people get mm -hmm. the worse it gets and they very rarely mean harm by it but that's not how it comes across when no. someone's grabbing you or they're too drunk and they're standing inches from your face yeah and the holding i find a lot of the time women will hold on to me because they are struggling to stand up yeah and they're getting on closer and closer and they're just they're not even like inappropriate groping but their personal space yeah. issue i have a big problem with yeah it just it's really hard to get away with from while still being professional being nice because you're at work yeah. you're being paid to be there and it's causing a scene versus there's definitely that element to it and i also find <clears throat> that or i have found it in my experience and, and the experience of many of the um uh, performers that i i know uh, women do tend to be worse about yep. it because there's a a dynamic of but it's all right because like i'm either the same gender of you or i remember having a conversation where i took a photo with somebody and some like a, a lady took a big old fistful of my backside it was um and i was just like that's not okay and she was mm -hmm. like it's all right you're a bloke and i'm like no yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not under no. any circumstances nothing makes it okay like it's 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 a really weird one because it is that as you say that balance between keeping the professionalism of being like okay i'm a performer i'm a thing is especially when you've taken your clothes off and you're like you're not gonna go and pick all the clothes up there's yep. stage kittens for mm -hmm. that, you know <laughs> so you take your clothes off and you're like right go straight back to the the changing room yeah and then you're like okay i'm walking through a variety of very drunk people that little element of intimidation yeah it's a tricky one to navigate mm -hmm. and if the there's feel sometimes like a, a power imbalance when you're on stage you're the one in yeah. control your people are sitting and watching you and as soon as you step off the stage i think people see that power balance shift and because you're no longer the performer you're now somebody wearing no clothes yeah yeah and on the same level like literally on the same level but also you're just one of us now because you're in the audience just trying yeah. to make a beeline for your disgusting toilet dressing room <laughs> <laughs> not all of them are disgusting toilet dressing rooms i mean some some of them are quite nice nice toilets nice toilets <laughs> nice uh, well, clean toilets you clean. know um but yeah yeah okay on, on to more positive yes. side of things though, because <laughs> i think i think the the negative is important to talk about but it is important to discuss the the positive side of things and going back to you doing your um, classes yeah. in burlesque which is fantastic and i and i love to see it and i love the fact that you invite me to come and doorman the the shows that i can attend which Always. is great i love it I, I love it because i get to see all the shows and performance and 
and it's also great as well to see them because obviously from my point of view i see like snapshots yeah. so i see like here's the routine of somebody who's just started burlesque yeah here's a routine of them six months on and just watching that growth is beautiful to see yeah. that that self-confidence that they have in themselves and i don't know whether it's just a, a self-confidence in the art form but it kind of feels like burlesque helps people get a confidence in themselves yeah it's a brilliant side effect of coming to class yeah it's just this self-confidence self-esteem self-worth oh right yeah like i'm not just a parent i'm not just a spouse i am my own person who can do whatever i want and whether they find performing liberating taking their clothes off liberating or they're a non-strip performer yeah. who just likes to be on stage carving out some me time to come to class in the week and getting to show people what they're passion about, passionate about it just makes people feel like beyond yeah and it, it's yeah. great as well because it's not like I think a lot of people especially again when they don't know much about burlesque think of a very specific type of person um young very fit of a certain body shape and what have you mm -hmm. but that is not the case at all no it's literally for everyone it's so no amazing your size race gender age age anything yeah anything goes and and yeah it's it's really i think one of the the greatest things about burlesque that i've seen especially uh, especially at your shows actually because i see it from an audience perspective mm -hmm is the amount of inspiration that people in the audience get because they see they're seeing their friends they're seeing their parents they're seeing their kids yeah. they're seeing whatever get up and, and do their thing and really feel confident about themselves and and embrace that yeah that sexiness yeah you know we get the most class inquiries and signups immediately after a show that doesn't surprise like in the me. half hour after the show when, <laughs> I, when i'm mingling through the audience handing out business cards <laughs> when you're also exhausted going like put on this yeah. entire show good luck fantastic <laughs> oh jesus but that because there's, there's also the element because you have like your showcases have the individual performers yeah but then you have like a, a group performance of the yeah. entire class as well and i've not really looked too much into burlesque troops but you're saying that's how you started that is how i started we were a troop and then some of us did solo bits yeah. as well there's um there is actual scientific research on um how dancing as a group makes you feel good um whether it's really? in class just dancing um something about the synchronicity of just dancing with other people all right okay um, there are articles on it <laughs> there are I suggest articles. you google <laughs> refer to science somewhere that's um just just about how it makes you feel good to be part of a group to be part of a collective um actual endorphins actual endorphins, actual endorphins. I love that. and i suppose that like obviously going back to the fact that this is a sex education podcast and um talking about the the ramifications i say ramifications the the great benefits of like burlesque on sex, sex lives, um, dynamics between partners and stuff. And I think a lot of it, from my experience at least, it stems down to that self-confidence. Yeah. Because if you're confident in yourself. I think that's the bottom line. The, the better mm. you feel about yourself, the better things are gonna go. And it is definitely, confidence is definitely one of the sexiest elements out there. Yes. Like, <laughs> somebody yes, walks into a room and you're just like, my god <laughs> be still my quivering quim <laughs> it's just like okay that person knows what they're about let's go you know and i think that's one of the big tantalizing things about burlesque i, would, I mean i would imagine yes is is the the self-confidence elements um of it though i think the real question that i think a lot of people would ask and maybe you will be able to share a little bit more as okay. a, a long time burlesque performer but also a um like somebody who teaches as well is uh do do people take it into the bedroom yes yeah yes they do oh wow well. um we've had some glowing reports <laughs> oh really um, yeah some of our uh, teaching people 
how to move or not necessarily how to move but how they feel good yes moving um one of my big things when i'm teaching is i'll teach you this choreo and i'm not trying to make you a mini version of me i'm i want you to do it what feels good for you yeah because i move this way it doesn't mean you can or you will or you want to yeah, yeah, yeah. you need to move in a way that makes you feel good and then we've done strip teases we've done lap dances we've done specific item removals and then people go home and do this for their partners and then they text us and say you'll never guess what happened last night <laughs> <laughs> and it does work if that's something you want to do it works so and it's it not even like these people have to they like, are coming to specifically be on a show they are also coming to like it could just be a personal thing it could just be a i want to get confident with myself yeah. with my partner in the in the boudoir yes and just Absolutely. Being like, let's go let's go let's go yeah oh i love that <laughs> i love that so much and oh yeah cuz i suppose that's the thing that i always think of in regards to burlesque because obviously rehearsals not necessarily sexy not sexy a lot of panting Sweating, <laughs> hair well, all over the place, <laughs> costumes hanging off you a little bit, you know. <laughs> and you practice taking something off, and then you put it on again, and then yeah. you practice taking it off again, and you put it on. <laughs> and you're just and like, "Good not... lord, the chafing that I'm having on this, this glove one now." <laughs> That's why you should yes. always get costumes that fit nicely, and mm. <laughs> costumes, amusingly, costumes, in my experience, have always been beautiful on the outside. Yeah. Yeah. Shoddy on the inside. The shoddy on the inside. Odd, odd stitching, random glue gun. Yeah. Just, it's fine, because once it's taken off, it's on the floor and no one's going to be paying attention to it. Yeah. It's something I've become more aware of as we've gone on. Like, if I take off this glove and we peel it inside out, what does the inside look like? Mm. So I now have reversible gloves. I've gone oh, that far. Really? You have gone <laughs> all gone in. I've gone that far. Um, decorating the inside of a corset. So if I've sewn a load of appliques, sequins, all sorts of stuff to it, and they've got all the ugly stitching on the inside, covered it with lining fabric. So Wise. that when you open it outwards so the audience can see the inside, Wise. the inside's pretty. Yeah, no, that is... Stepping up my costume game. I like it. No, it's, I, think it's, I think it's a really important part of, of everybody's dynamics in that regard. Um, because it, it's... I think there's a point where you focus so much on the, the dancing side of things and then the the thought to the costume side of things is second yeah and then as time goes on you're like cool i've got the dancing side of things oh jesus look at the stitching on this <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's it used to be a thing that i would make the cost the costume i could afford at the time yeah and then piece by piece embellish it make it better make it bigger replace bits mm. uh, but i'm trying to go all in from the beginning now that's good make... that's, does it not I suppose it makes a difference, does it not? To, to yeah. start start good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or start better than good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Start better than good. I love that because, yeah, I suppose it also adds to the durability of it and what have you. Yeah, exactly. Okay, question. What's the shoddiest costume you've performed in? Um, my point shoes are pretty dead. <laughs> <laughs> So for my rock sign, I've, I I wear my red sparkly point shoes, and they've been dead for a long time. And that's rock sign from like the Moulin, Moulin Rouge. Rouge, yeah, yeah. Rock, like full gruffy. That yeah. one, yeah. Rock please do that again. <laughs> I love it. I that love it one. so much. Um, you don't want to look at those. They're falling apart. The inside's disgusting. <laughs> the outside's not much better. And point shoes, as in the ballet shoes. As yeah. in the ballet shoes, yeah, yeah, yeah. to be chose. Um. I'm in the process of making some new ones. Not making the shoes. Uh, I was about to say, hold on. What? I bought the shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Embellishing some new yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to go a bit fancier with a bit more of an ombre Ooh. rather than just plain red. Yeah, yeah. Stepping it up. Oh, that's, that's always good. Oh, well, you, yeah. you're on this this new clique yeah. of, uh, of of costume design. Yeah. Yes. Oh, very good. Very that's good. that's probably the worst thing. Those shoes should have been retired a while ago. I think the worst one that I've done was I did a charity gig and one of the performers didn't show up 
and I, w I had brought their costume, which was my monkey onesie. <laughs> yeah, I, I brought a monkey onesie, and they were going to do it to that um, Discovery Channel. You and me, yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was I there at this show? Yeah, you might have I been. I don't I know. It's, it's a blur. I'm not gonna I'm lie. I'm pretty sure I was there. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, the person that's meant to be here, that they haven't showed up. God, oh no, this is the worst. And they were just like, yeah, we're not going to book this person again. And I was like, do you want me to step in? And yep. then I listened to the song nine times outside and, and, went, and, and did it. went and did it in the shittest boxer shorts. They were bad. I was definitely there. Yeah. I remember was... flashbacks. Oh, good. I can, I can imagine <laughs> the nightmares you're going to find right now. Because like, I was just like, I'm going to go down. I'm going to hand them this costume and I'm going to have a couple of beers and enjoy the show. Yep. That'll be fine and dandy. And they was like, no, I'm going to get up and, and fill in and, and be fine and help these people out. It's, it's great. It's going to be wonderful. And I was like, oh, this is bad. I am not wearing anything alluring right now. All right. Okay. Here we go. That probably <laughs> added to the, <laughs> uh, added to the uh, thing. Sketchy chic. That was it. Sketchy chic. <laughs> Trademark that. <laughs> It's, the only it's very you. It's very, it's a, how dare you? How dare you? All right. I will have you know. You're in my house. You're aware. It's like Prince Fuck the Moulin Rouge in here. Yes, it is. It's, it's, it's very me. <laughs> That's fantastic. What about yourself then? Have you, has, have your, have you taken uh, certain elements of the, the burlesque into the boudoir? Yeah. I like to tease. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's just great. Do you know what? It's nice to have someone watching you and you just, you can just see them like, just want you. Does if it? If that makes sense. And you're yeah, milking no. it for all you can. C completely. No, they are, they, like, though immediately in my mind, I can imagine a lot of people that may be listening are immediately like, oh God, no. Could do it in front of lots of people because they're an amorphous blob. But, um, mm like that one person it's a lot more pressure it's a lot more pressure but i've never really given that much of a shit about what other people think about me that is fair that is fair. <laughs> for as long as i've known you i agree you yeah. haven't and um, to be fair if you've already got someone in the bedroom with you yeah. they already want to have sex with you anyway you may as well probably yeah to go milk for it out it. for all it's worth yes. you know absolutely make them wait yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, for those listeners, the uh, look of sheer amusement <laughs> <laughs> on, your, on your face there. Just, yeah, yeah, that's, that's the thing that's happening. <laughs> oh, I love that. I absolutely love that. And it, I suppose, it, yeah, it really comes down to that, that self-confidence, that self-worth, that. Yeah. And I think once you've done it once, yeah. you'll have the confidence to do it again. Yeah. Because it's going to go down well. If you finish the routine, you know, oh, never, never finish a routine, <laughs> never finish a routine. Tease them to the point where they want, they they can't help it. They need to get up and, and yeah. do something about it. Yes, yes. I can't say I've ever done a full choreographed routine in the bedroom. We're not doing a three and a half minute song. No, God no. no. Get, Jesus, how it's too much. patience of a saint they must have. <laughs> Just be like, no, it's all right, it's okay, it's great. Sit on your hands, it's all right. <laughs> Don't move. It's great. <laughs> it's absolutely fantastic. I love that. I love that. What advice would you give to new people that might be thinking of burlesque or that have just started going to burlesque? If they're thinking of doing it, jump in the deep end and do it. Mm -hmm. Just go for it. People think about signing up for classes for weeks and months, sometimes even years before they actually do it and then say, I wish I'd done this sooner. Yeah. It's, it's usually the prevailing opinion. Um, and if you've already done it, uh, immerse yourself in it. Go to classes, not just with one instructor. Go see what else there is out there. Because if there's, if you live in a city where there's one class, there's going to be another. Yeah. And guaranteed. those two teachers are going to teach completely differently to each other, and they'll both have different experiences and different things to show you, and learn about the history. Go to shows, stage kitten at shows get as involved as you can and whoop try and for other performers whoop for other performers buy tickets if yeah. you're in the place to buy tickets that is the only thing keeping burlesque alive is buying tickets for shows yeah, yeah, yeah. which gets increasingly difficult as you know yep selling yeah, tickets especially at the moment with so many things going on yeah. um 
cost of living crisis and all that jazz oh, yes. people don't want to or, or are I, don't, I wouldn't say they don't want to they are more aware of where their money's going yeah and priorities change yeah 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 and though burlesque is a core essential to some of us it yes. might be a, considered a luxury to others you know? yeah but I think that's that's really important is like one of the dynamics that I've always found about burlesque is it's not just an art form it is a community it is like even if people yeah. that don't do burlesque themselves there's people that go and and will travel around with groups of friends and they're like I, i'll just be in every audience i'll be there whooping i'll be yeah. there cheering i'll be there videoing for so you can send it off to somebody else you know because yeah. that's the thing that's also important to remember like video your pieces so that you know you can yes. send them to yes. other people because <laughs> i am terrible at that yes you need yeah. videos um, yeah, it's nice to see the same, the same staple audience members at lots yeah. of shows, and then you can become friends with people that way and meet friends. Go to a show by yourself if you have to. If you have not got friends who want to go with you, just go and you'll make new friends. Yeah, guaranteed. And you've already got something in common. Yeah, you're already, you're yeah. both like burlesque. Yeah, yeah you great. just got to be that's really great. brave and do it. Yeah, just go do it. that thing on your own. Just go do that thing. Just go do that thing. Go do that thing. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining me today, Roxy Royale. Thank you, you for having so me. You're very, very, very welcome. Where can people find you? On the Instagrams. On the Instagrams. Uh, at Roxy Royale. Mm -hmm. Same for the website, RoxyRoyale.com. Uh huh. Um, Facebook, Roxy Royale. <laughs> and what about uh, your studio? My studio, Sunset Studios Beverly and House of Royale Burlesque, which is my burlesque classes run from Sunset Studios. Yeah. Yes. Fantastic. So you can all go and follow this wonderful individual, um, a long-time friend of mine. Uh, for those people that are listening on the podcast, I will also stick them in the down in the description, uh, either of the video on YouTube or of um, the podcast itself. So scroll down, give those links a click, go give this wonderful individual a follow. Um, but thank you so much for uh, joining me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, very, very welcome. It's been You're fun. Very welcome.